UKG Workforce Ready Chronos Timekeeper Training. In this video, you will receive training about how to add a miss punch, how to move an out punch to an in punch, how to record time off and view employee accrual balances, how to record an activity, how to convert overtime to comp time, how to cancel a lunch deduction for a particular day, how to change a schedule and lunch length, and how to print a timesheet. When you log into Kronos, you'll arrive at your main dashboard. Beginning in March 2022, your main dashboard will have a different background. However, the content of the main dashboard will be the same. There is one important difference, however. There's a tab called Training. If you click on that tab, you'll have access to all the different training documents for various aspects of Kronos. If you click page two, you'll see the remainder of the training documents available. In the coming weeks and months, more training documents will become available as well as links to videos. You can also find excellent training guides and videos by going to the CCS Internet Department's Treasurer's Office and then scrolling down to Financial Operations, Payroll, and Chronos. And here you'll see a wide array of documents and instructional videos. In this video, we'll talk about how to add a missed punch. When you log into Kronos, you'll arrive at your manager's self-service dashboard. On your dashboard, as you scroll down, you'll see your My Save reports. One area that missed punches may be under is under missed days. If I click the Run button next to the missed days report, it will default to the most recent past pay period. So in this example, it's on Monday, February 21st. I'm looking at the pay period which just ended on February 18th. This will show missed day. So a missed day could be due to the fact that the employee has two missed punches for the day, one for a swipe in or for a swipe out. Or it could be because the employee does not have time off entered on their behalf yet. So the missed days report is a good one to check both for missed time off as well as missed punches. If you click back to the UKG logo, it will take you back to the main dashboard. Scrolling down towards the bottom, you'll see the missing punches area. In this box will be listed when an employee has a punch in for a day, but not a punch out or vice versa it defaults to the most recent previous pay period. If you wish to change it to the current pay period, click the down arrow and select current. However, there are no missed punches in the current pay period. I click the down arrow and select previous again, and then click the little pencil icon next to the employee name. And here I'm taken back to the employee's timesheet. I can see that there is a missed punch in several different ways. Number one, under calculated total, there are zero hours. Since there is no out punch for the day, Kronos cannot tabulate how many hours the employee worked for the day. Secondly, there's a little hazard button right here. When I hover over it, it says this is a missed punch to make it crystal clear. And finally, the box itself is kind of grayed out. If I scroll down, I also see the missed day. Once again, a missed day may be because time off has not been entered for that day, or it could be that there are two missed punches, one for a missed punch in, one for a missed punch out. To fix a missed punch, click in the box, and based upon what the employee noted to you, either on a form or in an email regarding when they left for the day, at that time, into that box, you'll see that it defaults to PM. So it anticipates that since it's an out punch and based on the employee's schedule, that is PM. Let me show you what it would look like if you selected 1030 and they left actually at 1030 in the morning, you would click on the box of PM and it changes it to AM. Or you can click it back and it goes to PM. However, in this example, We'll say that the employee did leave at 4.30. Note a reason code. 
This is the reason that the employee noted that they missed the swipe. If you have any additional notes you would like to enter, click the little notes icon, click inside the add note box, and then type your note. Once you do so, you'll have the save button available and you can click save to save the note. To save the entry of the missed swipe and the reason code, click save. Let's say for February 17th, it's a similar situation, except in this case, the employee noted that they misplaced their badge. You enter the swipe in and swipe out based on what they noted on a form or in an email. In this case, there's not a reason code that directly corresponds. So you note misplaced badge. Click save, and then click save above. Now you'll see that there are no missed days exceptions, as well as no hazards indicating missed punches. If I go out to UKG again, and then under missed days report, click the run button, I no longer see any missed days. Once again, click the UKG icon, and go down to missed punches, I don't see any missed punches. How to move an out punch to an in punch. Occasionally, a punch will appear in the wrong column. This is usually because of a missed punch. The example we're looking at here, on Tuesday, January 11th, the out punch seems clearly to be in the wrong area. It's in the from punch column. Now to get that corrected so that that out punch goes to the to column, simply click on the little clock icon. Now when I hover above that clock icon, it says change punch interpretation. So I click that and it moves right on over. From there, you can enter the punch in time that the employee has provided you. Add the reason code and then click save and you're done. How to record time off and view employee accrual balances. Select the timesheet you wish to edit. In this example, the timesheet has no time entry for a scheduled day on Monday. So there is a missed day exception. To enter the time off, click the down arrow in the time off area. You notice when you do that, you'll see recent time offs that you have selected for that employee or possibly other employees as timekeeper. In this example, the type of time off is not in the list. So I'll click browse. Employee has noted that it was a family illness. So I'll click family illness. Before I do that, I'd like to bring you to your attention that there are multiple pages. So there's page one, page two, and in some cases you may have page three. So if you don't see your preferred selection on page one, click to page two. Go back to page one, click family illness, and in the raw total column, that's where I enter the time that was taken. Do not enter start times in the from area and end times in the to area for time off. Then click save. For a partial day, where someone has worked part of the day but needs to take time off for the other part, to add the time off record, click the plus sign. That'll add a row. Then in the time off area, select the time off. In this case, the employee used personal leave so I select personal leave. It's already in the list that I've recently used. And then enter the number of hours in the raw total area. And click Save. You also notice in this example, it's kind of fixing a time card at the end of a timesheet pay period, that the calculated total hours are 80. So you know that the employee is getting paid for their full amount of working hours for the week. 
To see accrual balances for the employee, click on the employee name. Then scroll down until you see the accruals area. And there you'll see the employee's current accrual balances, which takes into account any leave that they are taking on that particular timesheet pay period. To see accrual balances and comp time balances for a group of employees that you keep time for, you can do so by clicking the Run button next to Accrual Balances, or for Comp Time Balances, the Run button next to the Comp Time Balance. Please note that as of the time of this video, which is on January 28, 2022, these two particular reports take about one minute to run. How to record an activity. Activities in Kronos can be a type of pay, such as staff development, or a function, such as converting time to comp time. Converting time to comp time is discussed in another video. Activities available for selection may depend on an employee's type of work. The timekeeper must enter most activities, but some activities may be recorded by the employee at the clock and will appear automatically in the timesheet, that is, for certain groups of employees, such as custodians. In this video, we're going to look at three different scenarios for recording an activity. The first is an off-site activity without swipes. In this example, it occurs on Monday, January 10th. The employee had an eight-hour staff development off-site. To record that, I enter eight hours in the raw total column, and then in the activity area, the icon that has the magnifying glass on the piece of paper, I click that, and that shows browse. And from there, I select staff development. Then I click save. So that takes care of that scenario of recording an off-site activity. The next scenario is recording an activity with swipes for the entire day. In this case, on Tuesday, January 11th, the employee had eight hours of staff development on site. So they went ahead and swiped in and out as normal. Now to note that this was, in fact, staff development, in the activity column for that day, again, click the browse, the magnifying glass on the piece of paper icon, select staff development, and then click save. The final scenario is recording an activity with swipes for only part of the day. So in this example, the employee on, Monday, on Wednesday, January 12th, swiped in and out for their normal time for the day. But what happened is for the second part of the day, they had staff development. For the first half of the day, it was just their normal work. Now to note that, click the ellipsis, the three periods, to the left of the from column. Select split time allocation. In the activity area, choose staff development, and then select the time to split at in order to make it equal parts both ways, if that's what the scenario is. In this case, I select OK, and there it splits it with staff development in the activity column. You can click Save. Now let's say, uh, as an addendum to that scenario, the morning session was when the staff development occurred. Well, in that case, you would say split allocation, but you wouldn't choose an activity. You would select 11 a.m., click OK. It'll create the split. And then from there, you can go to the activity column and select staff development and then select Save. 
How to convert overtime or time worked on a calamity day to comp time. Time in Kronos can only be converted to comp if it is overtime or time worked on a calamity day. Overtime at the employee's option can be converted to comp time. Overtime is any time worked over 40 hours per week. Leave time, such as sick, personal leave, vacation, etc., as well as holidays, do not count towards the 40 hours. Overtime in Kronos jargon can also include time as stipulated in employee contracts or agreements, which is paid at one and a half times the regular hourly rate of pay. An example of this for some employee groups is time worked on a holiday. There are two key takeaways for this video. You can only convert overtime to Comp 1.5 on days on which there is this yellow overtime flag with the red exclamation point next to it. The second key point is, you can only convert time worked on a calamity day on days in which there was a calamity day. Attempts to convert time to Comp 1.0 on days other than a calamity day will not result in the conversion of that time. The rest of this video is an explanation of those two points. So let's take a look at this example. Here we have for the work week of January 10th, the employee worked eight hours each of the days, except on Wednesday. They worked two hours over their normal schedule. If we look at their summary by day tab, it shows that they worked 40 hours for the week, which that they were scheduled to work. There are 40 scheduled hours, and then two hours of overtime. They worked 42 hours total. Note that Kronos calculates the overtime as when they broke 40 hours for the week, not on the day that they exceeded their schedule by two hours, which was on Wednesday. So that's why there's the yellow overtime flag on Friday, not on Wednesday. So we choose in the activity column, convert overtime to comp 1.5, and we click save. We look at the summary by day tab, and we see that the overtime has been converted to comp 1.5, and there are two hours in it. So the employee will get two hours times 1.5, that is three hours added to their comp time balance. Something to always check before converting an employee's overtime to comp 1.5 is to check their accrual balance and to make sure they're not nearing the limit for their comp time balance. So for classified employees, that's 40 hours, a 40 hour limit, classified OPSI employees. And then for classified supervisors, it's 240 hours. So if converting their overtime to comp 1.5 would take them over their limit, then do not make that conversion. Simply let the overtime be paid to the employee. Now, just for the sake of experimentation to show what it would do, let's back out of this and let's do the common mistake of selecting convert overtime to comp 1.5 on the day that they exceeded their schedule, not on the day they exceeded 40 hours. We'll click save. Look at summary by day and we'll see that it did not work. It did not make the conversion. It allowed us to enter it. It didn't, it didn't throw up any roadblocks, but it didn't actually make that conversion. So we'll X out of that. We'll do it the correct way once again, putting it where there was the overtime flag. Click Save, Summary by Day again, we see it's correctly back in there. So the following week, there was a holiday. The employee worked over their scheduled hours for three of the days and slightly under for the final day. We look in the summary by day tab. In the regular hours, they were scheduled to work 32 hours that week. It did not include the holiday. They did work that 32 hours, but they worked four additional hours, that is four hours beyond their normal schedule. And those four hours were accumulated Tuesday through Thursday, slightly deducted on Friday for the, the slight shortfall on Friday. So they worked their scheduled hours and some. But since 
They didn't get into overtime status, and since there wasn't a calamity day during that week, then none of that time can be converted to comp time. It's simply paid to the employee. The final example is time worked on a calamity day. Here the employee worked eight hours a day each day of the week. On Wednesday, there was a calamity day. They worked eight hours that day as well. Make sure that on the calamity day that you don't select the convert to comp 1.0 on the actual line that has a time off with the calamity pay, but actually on the line that has the time worked. Select that, convert to comp 1.0, click save. And then we look at the summary by day tab and it's successfully in the comp 1.0 bucket. How to cancel or change the length of a lunch break deduction for a particular day. In this example, the employee noted that on Monday, January 10th, they did not take a lunch break. We can see right now that their swipe in time was 7 o'clock, their swipe out time was 3 p.m., gave them seven and a half hours of calculated time, which is a half hour less than normal. But they noted they didn't take a lunch. To cancel their lunch break deduction for that day, in the lunch break column, select the browse icon, click zero, then click save. Let's look at another example. On Tuesday, January 18th, we see that they swipe in at seven and swiped out at 4 p.m. So they had eight and a half hours of calculated time. But they noted to you that they needed to take a 60 minute lunch break that day as opposed to their normal 30 minute. To reflect that fact, click the browse icon and select 60. Then click save. You'll notice that their calculated total goes to eight hours. Let's look at the lunch break column one more time and look at the browse selection. These are the only selections available in regards to a lunch break. Zero to cancel, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or 60 minutes. At the end of each pay period, or shortly after the end of each pay period, such as on the Monday morning following a payday, timekeepers review all employee timesheets and correct all exceptions, such as missed days and fixed missed punches. Then timekeepers inform the approver that the time cards are ready for approval. Approvers must approve Cronus timesheets by the end of the Monday following each pay period. What if a timesheet needs corrected after the approver has approved the timesheet? If making the correction prior to the Wednesday following the end of the pay period, the approver can reject the employee's timesheet and then submit it. For directions on how to do that, approvers can refer to the document how to approve timesheets or to the video, Approvers Approving Timesheets. If trying to make the correction on the Wednesday following the end of a pay period or later in that week, the timekeeper approver cannot edit the employee's timesheet in Kronos. In that case, for any corrections needed, the approver must email the appropriate payroll clerk the Kronos corrections which are needed. To get a better understanding of when corrections in Kronos can be answered by the approver or timekeeper, let's look at the example of the pay period from March 5th through March 18th, 2022. The start of the pay period begins on a Saturday and ends on Friday, March 18th. On the 21st, timekeepers finish correcting employees' timesheets and inform the approver that timesheets are ready for approval. Approvers must approve all the employee timesheets by 11.59 p.m. on Monday. So when can an approver or timekeeper still be able to enter corrections directly into Kronos without the need of involving payroll? Timekeepers and approvers can enter corrections directly into Kronos all the way through Tuesday, March 22nd. As noted previously, to correct a timesheet which has already been approved, the approver must reject the timesheet needing the correction. Then the timesheet can be correct. Then the approver must approve the corrected timesheet. What though 
if it's discovered that a correction is needed and it's Wednesday or after Wednesday. In that case, the approver or timekeeper can no longer edit timesheets in Kronos. They can no longer do so because the pay period has been locked for editing or approving in Kronos. So it's no longer possible to approve or reject timesheets or to submit them. So for any corrections needed at this point in time, an approver must email the appropriate payroll clerk the Kronos corrections needed. Corrections after a pay period has been locked in Kronos cost time and money. Corrections sent to payroll involve staff manually updating Kronos and Munis and documenting the reason for the corrections. Corrections sent after a payroll has been completed, such as after the Friday following a payday, may also temporarily impact an employee's pay. For these and related reasons, Timekeepers and approvers are urged to ensure employees' timesheets are complete prior to when the pay period is locked in Kronos on the Wednesday morning following a payday. The next two training topics will be on how to change a schedule and lunch length and how to print a timesheet. How to change a schedule and lunch length in Kronos. To change an employee's schedule, from the main dashboard, click the three horizontal lines next to the UKG logo. Next, type in their employee ID and click on the employee name that appears. From there, click on the Profiles tab, which is written vertically, and scroll down to the bottom where it shows Work Schedule. In this example, the employee wants to change from 8 hours a day of a start time at 7 a.m. and an end time of 3.30 p.m. with a 30-minute lunch to 8 hours a day with a start time of 7.30 a.m., an end time of 4.30 p.m., and a 60-minute lunch. To make that change, click the Browse button, which is the magnifying glass on the piece of paper. You see a number of selections. These are mostly done in sequential order based on the number of hours in a day as a starting point. To see all the rows for all the schedules, click on the page icon. In this place, select the maximum of 200. You'll see all the available schedules. Then scroll down until you see the schedule that the employee has requested and it's been approved by their manager. So in making this change, there's also a change in lunch length. So it went from 30 minutes to 60 minutes. To also reflect that there's been a change in lunch length, there's an, uh, another area that needs to be addressed. So in their employee profile screen, as you scroll down, sc scroll down different areas, and in the cost centers area above the accruals area, you'll see default lunch break. There you can click browse after clicking the down arrow and select the lunch break that the employee has requested. And that is for the current day and going forward. It's a semi-permanent change. Then click save. So in the example that we're using, the employee has requested the change at the beginning of the pay period. So they requested it and had it approved back on January 24th, but we're just getting to entering it into Kronos today, which is January 28th. So they've already started working that schedule. So you can see in their calculated total, they're getting eight and a half hours. And that the lunch break is still listed as 30 minutes. Now for the current day, the lunch break or the schedule is correct. Shows it as eight hours, correct start end time, correct lunch. The lunch break has not yet changed. If we look into the future days, the schedule is correct and the lunch break is correct. So those won't need changed in the future. But how about changing past entries? for a timesheet which has not yet been approved, past schedule entries, that is. Well, to do so, click on the schedule link, and then under shift type, click the down arrow, 
Then select the schedule that you'd like. Then click Save. You'll notice that doing so, even after clicking Save for the timesheet, doesn't change the calculated total because the lunch break is still listed as 30 minutes. So to do that, click in the lunch break area, select 60, and then Save. And now it changes it to the correct calculated total of 8 hours. In this example, all the days need that change. Simply go through, make that change, even for the current day, so that when the person swipes out, they'll have the correct lunch break length. Click Save, and then correct the remaining schedule entries. Now after clicking Save, you'll see that for these four days, the calculated totals are correct. Eight hours, the lunch break length is what the employee has requested and the manager has approved. And then for future days, the schedule and lunch break length are set going forward based on what we entered in the employee profile. How to print a timesheet. After selecting the timesheet that you wish to print, Click the ellipsis, which is in the top right-hand corner of the timesheet. It's going to be to the right of the areas where you have normally save, approve, and reject. Although those buttons can be in different orders or some may not even appear depending on the status of the timesheet. Click in those three periods, the ellipsis, and there you'll have different selections pop up. Select print. And here you'll have a variety of options you can choose. The options selected here are the ones most commonly chosen. You can also select time off counts and that will show all the accrual balances as of the current date for that employee. Select print and the best orientation for this layout is landscape. In this case, since this is a test computer, it doesn't have a printer setup. But normally, if you're on a network computer, you just simply select your destination, or it'll be already populated, and then click Print, and you're done. For assistance accessing or using Chronos, feel free to contact me, Phil Watson, at the phone number or email listed, or Aaron Shell, UKG Ready Analyst, at the phone number or email listed. Also, feel free to contact the payroll clerk who handles the payroll for your school or department, as they are well-versed with using Chronos.